Hey everyone, I've decided to dedicate a video to my Danger Den triple radiator water box. I know it's featured in a lot of my videos previously, but I've never actually gone over all of the specifications in detail. I find I'm referring to it a lot in my videos and pretty much I don't have a video that I can link people to that actually gives a decent explanation of the water box and all of its specifications. So that's what this video is. So you can see the system on the left. That's my test bed where I do all my testing for my reviews. So that's being cooled by my Danger Den triple radiator water box. Now first of all I'd just like to say that I didn't build this water box to cool this test bed. All it's doing at the moment is cooling the CPU on this test bed. Now obviously this water box is complete overkill for cooling a single CPU. Something like this with triple radiators could cool a dual CPU SR2 build you know with quad SLI, the whole system, the motherboard, the RAM, CPUs, GPUs, the whole lot. This is an amazing water box. It's very highly powered uh, a very highly powered cooling system. So I just wanted to clear that up that I didn't build this water box to cool this test bed. I actually built it so that if a water cooling system breaks down in, in another system that I have, if a pump blows, if something goes wrong, I can just easily plug this system into it and get it up and running again straight away. I also built it so that I could do water cooling reviews. I also may use this water box for a future build. Anyway, time to bring you in for a closer look. Okay, so as I've already mentioned, this water box is made by Danger Den. I'll put a link to the product page. So I've just got one of the dust filters off the front here. The dust filters are something extra that I've added. They're DEMCI Flex dust filters. They're the 360mm ones. So they come with a magnetic strip and that's just got tape on the back of it so that just sticks straight on and then the dust filters are magnetic and they just stick straight onto the magnetic strip so perfect for this kind of application. So I've just taken one of them off so that you can see the grills that are cut into the water box and also how I've got the radiators bolted on. So if you look through the grill, you can actually see the radiator fins through there. Now the bolts that I've used to bolt the radiator on are included with the water box. But the bolts on the other side, which I'll show you shortly, that I bolted the fans on with, I had to buy separately. So depending on how you configure your water box, whether you put the fans on this side or the other side like I have, you'll probably have to buy some extra bolts. So the water box is made from black acrylic. And when Danger Den sends it to you, it's all nicely packaged and covered so it can't be scratched. And you actually have to assemble it yourself. So I'll just read off the dimensions of the water box. It's 488 millimeters high. It's 270 millimeters wide. And it's 508 millimeters long. It also has 50 millimeters sticking out on either side for extra stability and what appears to be 20 millimeters on either side as well. The radiators I chose are Black Ice SR1s. They're designed for low RPM fans for maximum stealth and silence. So they're actually designed for fans between 800 RPM and 2000 RPM. They have nine fins per inch, which is an extreme, extremely low FPI to allow for those low RPM fans. So these are 360 millimeter radiators. They're 55.7 millimeters thick they have the standard G1 quarter inch thread and 
The mounting holes have an M4 thread for mounting the radiators and also for mounting the fans. So the fans I've chosen are NMAX Magnus. There's actually nine of them here, three per radiator. They're 120 millimeter by 25 millimeter fans. They push 69 CFM. They have a maximum RPM of 1500. They can handle 85 degrees Celsius for 100,000 hours at mean time before failure. And at 1500 RPM, they're 18 decibels. Okay, so the reservoir I'm using is a Danger Den radiator reservoir. It's specifically designed to be mounted onto a radiator that takes 120 millimeters fans. So as you can see, I've bolted it straight onto a 120 millimeter fan, and I could have also mounted it straight onto the radiator. So obviously the mounts are 120 millimeters square. So this is perfect for this kind of application. It doesn't block much airflow at all either. I also chose it because it's an awesome looking reservoir. I really love the look of it. It's chunky and sturdy looking. So I'm using dual Swiftec MCP655 pumps with full bits power mod kits. So you can see the black part on the bottom of the pump, on the back of the pump. That's one half of the bits power mod kit. And I also have this bits power dual D5 pump top. It's a plexi pump top. So the pumps are just sitting on a piece of sponge there to stop vibration. So I'll just go over the specifications of these pumps. They have a maximum pressure of 50 psi, a maximum head of 3.1 meters, maximum output of 1200 liters per hour, so the reason why I wanted to run dual pumps is because if this water box is on the floor it may have to pump a lot of extra distance up to the system so I wanted to have that extra power that extra pressure also because I might end up hooking up this water box to a system with multiple water blocks motherboard, CPU, multi GPUs, memory, the whole system who knows, maybe even a dual CPU system. Now the coolant I'm using is Feza 1. It's red UV reactive coolant. The tubing is also Feza. Red UV. I'm using all bits power fittings. A combination of black sparkle and also shining silver. It's pretty hard to tell the difference between the two, but you might just be able to see, I think that's a black sparkle on the left there and a shining silver on the right, the compression fittings. So yeah, they're all compression fittings. There's a lot of 90 degree elbows, 90 degree dual rotary fittings, etc. I also have coolants quick disconnects here on the side of the water box. So there's two holes through the water box there and the perfect thing to do is use coolants quick disconnects so that you can easily disconnect the tubing off the side of the water box if you need to move it around so I've got 90 degree elbows there and then the tubing goes up to the CPU water block here which is an EK Supreme HF nickel acetyl and I've got two more coolants quick disconnects there just so that I can easily disconnect the test bed and I can change around the heat sink to air cooling if I want to just allows for extra flexibility now I'm just going to give you a look at the tubing routing starting from the reservoir so the coolant comes out of the reservoir goes into the pumps through the pumps and then it goes out to the CPU or whatever the water box is cooling. Then it comes back, it goes through a coolant filter just there, and that goes into the first radiator. And then you can see down there it goes out of the radiator and loops into the second radiator. 
out of the second radiator into the third radiator and then up out of the third radiator and back into the reservoir. There's two LEDs in the pump, in the pump top and I've also got a red LED strip down the side here. That PCB is for the fan controller. So this is an NZXT LXE touch sensitive fan controller and it gives me full control over all nine of the NMAX Magma fans as well as giving me the room temperature and the coolant temperature. So the room temperature is the lower one it's 26.2 or 3 degrees and the coolant temperature is only about 2 degrees warmer. That's because the water box isn't exactly under any load. So it was quite a handy fan controller for me to use because it has this PCB which is actually designed to go in a PCI slot but I could hide it away in the water box. So I've also used a Bits Power X station down there to power everything, the pumps, the lighting, the fans, the fan controller, it's all powered by this one Bits Power X station which splits one Molex out into four Molex and it's also got a bunch of three pin fan connectors and a couple of four pin fan connectors on it as well I think which I'm not using, all the fans are plugged into the fan controller PCB just here you can see them all plugged in the back of it there and same with the temperature sensors it was it's great to be able to plug everything into the one place perfect fan controller for this application and then there's plenty of extra cable there for me to unravel so that I can have the water box a long way away from the system and still be able to control it anyway I'll just give you a bit more of a look around the back here so that you can see there's actually a hole just down there for the power cable to run through so you can see that comes out just there and then that just runs off to the power supply so I've just used a 4 pin Molex extension cable there okay so that sums up this video thanks for watching please subscribe and give the video a thumbs up thanks everyone